Hi, this is Margo. This is Thursday morning, September 26, 2019, 10.19 a.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. <clears throat> and I'm going to do an earthquake report. I haven't done just a separate earthquake report in a while. Just got too much to keep doing the daily earthquake reports. But, um... We've got a lot going on that I wanted to show everyone. This just came in. Uh, 6.1 in Argentina. It's actually in Chile. But near Angostura, Villa La Angostura, Argentina. Came in at 9.36 a.m. Pacific Time. 129 kilometers deep. <clears throat> All of these times are in Pacific time because that's my time zone. Actually, it happened in Chile. The reporting station is across the border in Argentina, though. So that just came in. We've also had um, lots of activity coming out look over here this is in the Canary Island region just off the coast they call it Frontera Spain but this was a 4.8 that came in at 602 this morning here are the Canary Islands it's a group of islands that are uh, very volcanic in nature There are earthquakes happening here, but USGS doesn't always report on them. It's off the coast of North Africa. So, this is a hot spot to watch. Also down in the South Atlantic, there have been two large ones. Right on the red line, a 5.2 and a 5.4 came in. This 5.2 came in at 1.15 yesterday afternoon and then the 5.4 came in three minutes later at 1.18. We have 314 earthquakes worldwide for all magnitudes. Of note also was this one in Russia, a 4.6 near Kurumkhan, Russia. This was reported, came in at 6.22 last night. Right down here. In southern Russia. Here's Mongolia. There's China where it comes up. A lot of Russian earthquakes are not reported, so when it when they are reported, it's definitely to note. Also, we had a 5.7 in the Sea of Mar Marmara in Turkey at 3:59 this morning. So we see that these are getting larger. Lots of high fives and six ranges. 4.3 near Kudash, Kudasht, Iran. This came in at 5.35 yesterday afternoon. So 4.5 near Karakul, Tajikistan. 4.7 near Mirpur, Pakistan. That came in at 1.26 this morning. Four point eight near 
Aras Asan, Philippines, 4.6 near Simpa, Indonesia. This is in the Bali region. Bali's right over here. Then, look at this. 6.5 near Kairatu, Indonesia. This was in the water. This came in <coughs> yesterday at 4.46 p.m. They're not showing a tsunami alert there. There's been so much going on, I'm telling you. In the same area, 5.4 and 4.2. That 5.4, I can't tell if... Yep, that was on land. Most of these are in the ocean, but sometimes they hit an island or in the land and on the land. Here's a 5.2 at Papua New Guinea. 5.1, another one near Papua New Guinea. Four point five Sola Vanuatu. Four point nine near Raoul Island, New Zealand, and so on. Coming on around. 4.8 near Nago, Japan. Right on the red line. Here's one off the coast of Hokkaido, Japan. 4.8 near Nimuru, Nimuro, Japan. Those are the international quakes. Well, let's finish up South America. 5.3 near Belen, Argentina. And 4.1 near Aguilar, Argentina. Those are the international quakes. Then here's Hawaii with 13. <coughs> They're clustered down here at Pahala. And here's one at near Mauna Loa, almost at the crater. Right right on the edge of the crater, 2.1. Notice that's up in the crater. It's a minus 1.3 kilometer depth. Here's one off the coast at Lilani Estates, a 1.7. And then we've got these down at Pahala, 11 here. Now whenever you see, like, those earthquakes in the ocean, like down in Indonesia and stuff, that can trigger underwater landslides and all kinds of stuff. Now, they've had an event going on over here at Puerto Rico in the last couple of days, I'm going to turn on all magnitudes for the last seven days. They've had 246 earthquakes down here in the last seven days. <coughs> Turn on four and a half magnitude and higher in the last seven days down here. There was a 6.0 that 
that came in on the 23rd. Five point one and four point eight. Those were in twenty four hours of each other. <coughs> but with all magnitudes in the last seven days, they've had, like I said, two hundred and forty six. So this is rocking. The majority of them are right here in this area just to the north of Puerto Rico so there's definitely something going on there when we now let's go back to one day one day all magnitudes only 11 so it's slowing down but still active then rem I said remember I said that it was in some video recently I said that Alaska was awfully quiet because it was only showing about 25 earthquakes they average between 50 and 100 a day so They've got 44 up here right now in the last 24 hours. But what we've been seeing is this clustering up here in northern Alaska near the Arctic Village and Koktovik. It's still clustering. We've got eight up here. This is at Kobu, it's really slowed down since I've been reporting. Couple there. This one is uh, 2.1 at Shishmaref on the land there, right next to the Bering Strait. Then we got them coming down. Now here's a 3.0 at Cantwell. We've been seeing a lot of activity down here near Redoubt the Volcano. Here's a 2.5 that just came in, and old Iliamna. So, a lot of activity there. And we've got some small ones down here in the Aleutian Islands. We've got activity up here in the armpit. It's a 2.3 Yakutat. And then, coming on down into the lower 48, this just came in on Vancouver Island, a 2.3 near Lake Coachon, Canada. A 2.6 explosion at Princeton, Canada. That's common. And here's another explosion, a 2.0 explosion at Granite Falls, Washington. You know, this triggers all those tremors and earthquakes. And what I wanted to show, here's today, down here at the fulcrum point, a 2.2 at Hydesville. But also, here's one right in Lake Almanor, 2.6, they're calling it near Prattville. But it's in Lake Almanor, which is a reservoir, and it's not very far from the dam. There's the dam, Canyon Dam, right down here. And here's the earthquake that happened. So anytime I see an earthquake, and that's good sized, it's a 2.6. Whenever I see it in the reservoir, or you know, near the reservoir, and especially near the dam, that's that perks me up. <coughs> I also wanted to show Mammoth Lakes, this has gone down, there are 23 here in the last 24 hours, but I want to show, and this is one of the main reasons I wanted to do a report today, in the last 7 days, they've had 162 earthquakes here, 
This is part of the Long Valley caldera. It's a huge, huge volcano. Dormant. But I think it's all coming back to life. 163 right here well, when I zoomed in so two of them are off the map 161 just in this area of Mammoth Lakes so there's definitely something going on here when you've got it swarming like that Turn that off. Three point six at Goldfield, Nevada. That's getting up there. So you see, you know, we still have the small ones, but we're getting larger ones too. Over here in Utah. There's been activity going on in Utah. Um, here's the Yellowstone area. But this has been... And then, when you... There's a 3.1 that happened at Trona just recently. I've got... This is the event area. The Searles Valley Ridgecrest event area. They've got 106 in the last 24 hours. This has not stopped ever since everything started happening in early July. I've been recording this every day. The lowest they had in a 24 hour period. Let me see. 72. That happened on September the 17th. I think that was the lowest. They've been gradually getting lower. Yep. That was on the 17th. Then they started going back up and just fluctuating between around 80 and 100. On this morning, it was 106, and it's still 106. Now, if you want to look at this area for the last seven days, got 672 in the last seven days. So it's almost a hundred a day still coming in. Some of these are at negative depth like this one that just came in this morning a point nine at Coso Junction at 1017 this morning at a minus point one kilometer depth that means the earthquake was up in the mountain and probably it was an old volcano cone this 3.1 at Trona that came in at 911 this morning was at a minus point nine kilometer depth. So it was up in the mountain. Means the magma is moving up. It's very close to the surface. It's coming up in the chambers. It's moving up. That's what that means. We'll go back to one day. There. 
I keep that one up all day long just to see what's going on. We've also got activity in Oklahoma still happening. These are good size. Lots of twos. Here's this 2.8 at Quentin over here. All of this is from oil wells fracking. Here's a 2.6 at Pecos, Texas. Here's a 1.4 at New Madrid. New Madrid. That's how you're supposed to say it. This came in at 110 yesterday. No. 310 yesterday afternoon. That's in the New Madrid hazard area. Then in Southern California, the usual places. Only 26, but it's still happening. And then we can see them coming up along this red line, which is the San Andreas Fault. Then we've been having a lot of activity in the Pinnacles area. Eight right here in the last 24 hours. And a good size. 2.6 just came in. 2.7 down here. And so what we're seeing is they're larger Here's a 1.5 near Crockett. This is in the San Francisco area. Here's a 1.5 at Yountville. And Geysers only has 19. So, but it's still happening. And so on. So the fact that we're seeing this and this huge activity at Mammoth Lakes and now this, see it's almost a straight line coming up through these Sierra Nevadas up in Lake Yalmanor. That's kind of disturbing. Anyway, now of all of these 313 earthquakes, now here's the last seven days for four and a half magnitude and higher. The UK had a 4.6, was in the North Sea. That happened on the 24th. <coughs> So we can see a lot has been happening down here, just to the south of Madagascar. There was another event uh, on this southwest Indian Ridge, 5.1, 6.1, 5.1, 4.9. So if you don't watch them every day, you know, you can go in and look at the last seven days and see all the activity. The orange ones are the last 24 hours and the yellow ones are in the last seven days. There was a big one up here in the Aleutian Islands, a 5.3 and a 4.7 and a 4.9 over by Kamchatka. So, there you have it. So that's my earthquake report for today. Forty-seven that are two and a half magnitude and higher. This just came in, a 2.5 at Redoubt Volcano. I think that's the one I showed. 
2.7 at Pinnacles, I showed that. 2.6 at Pahala, Hawaii. So the reason I'm doing this reporting is I'm a watch person, a watch woman, and I'm reporting on what I'm seeing connected to the signs of the end times. And in Matthew 24, the disciples of Jesus were asking him, how would they know, or how would we know, when he was going to return? And he listed off all these different things, and this is, you know, people have heard this passage probably more than most passages, wars and rumors of wars, famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Now how would the people back then know of earthquakes in diverse places? Jesus was speaking to our generation, the last generation you would have to be able to be aware of earthquakes around the world. You would have to have a global monitoring system to know of earthquakes in diverse places. If you're in, without the internet, if you're in America and there's an earthquake in China, you wouldn't know about it. Back then, you know, they wouldn't know about an earthquake in South America if they were in Jerusalem. You know, so he was speaking directly to our generation. So these are the signs. There are earthquakes in diverse places all around the world, and we are aware of them because we are connected by this World Wide Web. So I do believe his return is soon. And if you have not gotten your spiritual house in order, I recommend you do it while you still have a chance. Because if you're in the middle of a catastrophe or disaster of some kind, you're not going to be thinking about saving your soul. You're going to be thinking about saving your body. But these bodies are temporary. What you need to be worried about is your soul. And the most important preparation is spiritual preparation. So I'm praying for everybody who is not come to Jesus and not gotten in the fold with Jesus and God that you know if you're on the fence you know just get off that fence now and come on over come on over Jesus is loving and kind and gentle he's forgiving if you're honest and sincere. This is going to be the only protection that we have as we head into these darkest days as Satan walks the earth and he disguises himself in many ways. Someone charming. Someone handsome. Could be man or woman or a child. You're going to have that discernment. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot have the discernment. You cannot see through the lies and the deceit. You think you're a truth seeker. You think you're seeing through the lies and the deceit. 
being a truth seeker if you don't have the covering of the Holy Spirit and God and Jesus you will not be able to see through the lies and the deceit you will be deceived Jesus said I'm the way the truth and the life and the only way to the Father's kingdom is through me he was sent to be our guide our teacher our Savior and also our advocate in the heavenly courts he was sent to live a human life to suffer human things the body suffered but he knew that he came from another realm this is not my earth this earth is not my home is what I meant to say and the sooner we can let go of our 3d reality here the sooner we're going to be able to be ready to go to God's kingdom so I'm praying for everybody time is so short it's just so short I'm praying for everyone I love you and until next time God bless you and go in peace Goodbye.